Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag WAW. What a week. Welcome to Wow What a Week. In this week's edition, we're dealing with power. Nope, we won't be speaking to a guy named Andre, but we will be speaking to other people about the power of soul the power of positivity, and the power of, um, well, power banks. Welcome back to Wow What a Week. This is... Wow! What, what, what a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Our guest is in the building. He's been funny on stage, acted on a range of shows from comedy to drama, made memorable adverts, yes helped to educate us on car spinning and making sishebo, and even danced on TV. He's practically a tampon advert. He can do anything. Please give a wow welcome to Mr. Mudikwani, a.k.a. Paul Pops. What a week, what a wow. What a dude. What an amazing guy. show. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? You know, every time I've had you on any of my shows, we've gotten in trouble with the white people. Yes. Every, every time. single with, time. With, with, every Why do you keep upsetting white people? I don't know. I don't know. I think the last time they were upset because I said, because um, it was the time the lion attacked an owner. Yeah. And I said, it's funny how the lion only ate the white person. <laughs> maybe, maybe lions know something we don't know. That white people are delicious. <laughs> Yeah, the chicken of the jungle. <laughs> no, how about a white meat is good for you? Fruity. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know what it is. You know, even when I started doing comedy, yeah, I uh, because when you when you start, you know, you gravitate towards race stuff. Mm, mm, so I was strategic mm. about it. I would get on stage and I'd make fun of myself first. Oh yes, yes myself yes, yes. and my race first. Then I'd slowly move towards white people because then I'd do, I'd, after black people, I'd go Indian, then I'd go colored. Then by the time I get to white, it's it's okay because we've laughed at everyone. Exactly. But we're like, <laughs> say, hey. What's in, that fact, in fact, the only reason uh, we started uh, Wow What a Week is so that I could get you on my own platform without worrying whether you're going to upset people. <laughs> it's the only reason I did this thing. After this interview, I shutting down everything. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you speak of starting your comedy career. You know, you often talk about how your depression yes. is what got you into comedy. Yes. I thought depression makes you want to stay home and do nothing. How do you want to no, go? Oh, oh, oh. I, think, I think depression makes you, it can do one of two things. Yeah. It can make you give up or sure. it can make you fight for your life. Mm, mm. And I think that's what happened to me because I, I remember this moment, you know, my, my mom had just kicked me out of her house. Um, and you know, I, I don't know why she was so dramatic about it. When she kicked me out, she got a truck to come fetch my stuff, my man. Fresh, I was living in a room in my mother's house. She got a truck to fetch my things. How, how, do you, how much stuff did she think I had? Because when I loaded that truck, all my stuff fit into a corner. It was a long flat bed. <laughs> And there I am now, leaving Mondi or going to Zone 9 Middlelands. So how old are you when your mom is kicking you out of the house? Oh, I think I was 18, 19. Yeah, yeah she kicked me out. I was, yeah, I was, I was living so somewhere. So you don't own much when you're 18 anyway. Exactly, exactly. She just kicked me out with all the things that I had. And then yeah. I went to Zone 9 Middlelands to stay with my grand. Sure. And I remember that's when things became real. You know, the, the, the poor decision making had caught up with me. I, I was. You're 18. That's your career, making poor decisions. <laughs> how, how do you punish someone for that? No, but what she did was the best thing she could have ever done as yeah. a mother. Because yeah. most parents aren't able to do that. Most parents aren't able to recognize, but when are you going down the wrong path? You need tough love. Exactly. Yeah. She, she administered that tough love. And I remember being Kozona in Middle Lands. I, I stayed in the back room. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. My gosh. So already you were like a labor <laughs> at <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was with my grandmother. Yeah. Like my grandmother would make wake you up at 5 a.m. Mm. So hantata. It's like, mom, I'm unemployed. Why am I? So hantata. Oh. I'm a child. I'm a child. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't do anything. I just get random knocks on the top. I we much are thing in a nap. Oh, 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 how did she smell? Oh, I didn't even start speaking. And what is it? And banana by Kenny Moakir, Banya. Fred, 
And what's it with with the trail of face at dawn? What was the line fella cap in a sob or rubello boots in Yako too? Yes. And why why do parents when they catch you make it seem like you were with someone else? Dude, I just with it and my hand. How how do you mean one? No but no but you know why though? Because they understand that at that age. Mm-hmm. You have a mental wank bank. Uh-huh. So as you're scommeling there, <laughs> you've accessed s- someone in your <laughs> wank bank. So to go, go. You are not alone in the room. Mm-hmm. And then after that, they don't trust you. Now you can't touch things in the house anymore. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Bula Rakaka left hand. <laughs> you can't do anything. You can't do anything. Dude, you can't go from we're watching TV to go get water. Oh, happy little man, so why you <laughs> hey, it was too hard and lost like my pili. And they knew, Bella, on Saturdays you'd have to you'd have to watch Emmanuel with no volume. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. And you and you still get caught. You still get caught. You st- cause you cause as as Emmanuel is on or oh, shall I volume down to blow me in, then as soon as as soon as you hear movement, you change the channel. <laughs> but now it looks suspicious. Why? Why are you watching the like documentary? Only this is wrong. Your pants are halfway down. <laughs> <laughs> and you're watching Desmond do the tele. Flying tail line. What? Why are your pants down? That's what is this day. These people are expensive. God bless them. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> this man always <laughs> this man always comes out of weird situations. <laughs> <laughs> These people are expensive. God bless them. <laughs> <laughs> or a little class death can be expensive <laughs> oh death that is why my coffin has airbags <laughs> at clientele we now offer coffins with airbags because you never know what could happen down there fish <laughs> fish <laughs> Oh man, oh, man. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, that's for me. That's where it all began, you know. And and I, oh yeah, I, we, we did ask a question, by the way. Yes, <laughs> and and this. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it began for me because I remember sitting in that room. Yeah. I, I'll never forget it. I remember there was a time at the height of my depression. I was laying in there mm. where I slept. The roof used to leak. Jeez, you know. So rain was never welcome. Re- <laughs> There's, there's, there's nothing more said than sleeping with an umbrella. But uh, <laughs> being the only guy praying for trout. <laughs> <laughs> and it used to get so cold. You yeah. know when you speak, you mm. that mist. Yeah. You look like you're vaping. Yes. And, and I remember as cold as it was, I would never sleep in the blankets I would lay because the pain I was feeling mm. didn't allow me to feel the physical pain. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I remember I was at my lowest point in my life. And I remember at that point... There was like a turning point that happened. I, because mm. I was going to UJ at the time. Sure. So I took my, my transport book and I was like, you know what? Let me combat combat this yeah. by writing happy thoughts, things that, that. Uh, was suicide ever an option for you? It, look, honestly speaking, mm. it crossed my mind a couple of times. Sure. And the only thing that kept me from doing it is. My dad committed mm. suicide. Oh wow! Right, my dad committed suicide. So surely that didn't help. It didn't, and mm. and I saw what it did to our family. How old were you when when dad? I was eleven. Jeez. Yeah, I was eleven years old. And who told you? It what? was it wasn't my mom. Yeah. And and I was so upset with her when I was young, and I don't I like going back now. I'm just like, I I needed to re- direct my anger somewhere, but I directed it to my mom because mm. my mom didn't tell me. Uh, mm. Mm. My mom told me he got hijacked. Yes, and he yes, didn't yes. want to give up the car. Uh, and then... So who told you that My dad, sister. My sister yeah. told me. My sister told me, like, and she didn't spare, you know... The details. The, yeah, she mm. literally told me how it happened. Jeez. The letter that he left, you know, where it happened, how it happened. And I remember for the longest of time, I... Because even when I was in varsity, you know when you're in varsity, you see other kids living certain lives and you're like, 
this could have been me. Yes, yes, my yes, yes. dad was doing well. Like mm. he was, he was one of the the first guys that 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 had amazing jobs at. Uh, before Unilever was called Unilever, it was Lever Brothers. Oh yes, yes, and yes. He yes, went yes, on yes. to MTN. He was mm. part of the first group that got shares in MTN. So he was he was doing so well. So do, you, do do you know why he wanted to check out? I I didn't know at the time, yeah. and I blamed him for it. Sure. And then the older I got, is the more I understood. Mm. And because I'd made an oath and a promise to myself that I would never put my family through something like that. Sure, sure. I made a conscious decision to fight for my life. And that's and that's where that's where something like comedy helped because comedy became my happy place. Mm, mm. You know, it became a it became somewhat of an escape. But I think more than just more than just saying, you know what, I'm 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 gonna end it, it's realizing that there's certain things you have to learn to deal with and that's where balance becomes more important. Oh yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. So I think we live we live in a world where a lot of us aren't attuned with what we need. Mm. to create a healthy balance in our lives. Mm. Mm. So, and I, and, and I honestly believe that, that suicide catches you at a moment of weakness. Yes. I feel like there's so many guys, like if you, if you look at Ricky, Ricky has been, had been battling this thing for years. Yeah. And mm. I feel like there was a moment where in his weakness, he succumbed to, because mm. mm. he, he- And often it's at the moment. It's at that moment. Yeah. It's yeah. at that moment. And I, and I feel like that's why it's important to have a healthy balance of everything in your life. You gotta, you gotta look after yourself. You gotta sleep properly. You gotta eat properly. You gotta exercise regularly. You gotta have a healthy friendship lifestyle. You gotta have sure. a healthy family balance. Mm. You know, mm. a lot of us we we put ourselves into one category. We go, for the next ten years of my life, I'm just gonna work. Yes, I'm just gonna work. I'm just gonna work. And then you and then you and then you're surprised why you're not happy. You're making all this money. You've got all these accolades, but you're not happy. Sure. Because you, you, you've affected the balance in the other spheres in your life. What balance is your golden rose bringing to your life? Hey, fresh. I don't have any golden roses in my life. You don't? No. No, for a long time. What happened? Um, Keegan, what happened? <laughs> what happened, Keegan? What happened? Do you know a show called Kumbu Lekai? Yeah. Um, ring? What happened? No, <laughs> so no. Hold on, man. Just now in lockdown, you guys were relationship in Hulubnati. Hey, Fred. Just now, lockdown was long ago. Yeah, it was two lifetimes ago. No, lockdown was just now. No, we 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 split up. So Rose and I broke up. Why? I, I, Dude, I, I'd I'd never seen you as happy as I saw you with Rose. Yes, because you saw the social media side of things. Even when I met you guys on no ship. Yes. No, 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 you guys look like you're Noah and Miss Noah. <laughs> 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 Some, these are all our animals. <laughs> I was, you know, and, 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 and that's the one thing I'll I'll never deny. Yeah. It was it was really it was really good while while mm. while, while it lasted. But I think over time yeah. you start realizing certain things about your relationship. Sure. That, that don't speak to who you are mm. and what you aspire to. Okay, so basically, let, I, I, I'm done. I got to post them out. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, you see, that's also the other thing is, is living a social media life. With or relationship. Don't ever do it's like It's like guys who gym with their... With so their are they right? Hashtag it will end in tears. It will definitely <laughs> end in tears. Because the, cause that's the thing, right? Yeah. Is you end things. Yes. The world hasn't forgotten that you... Uh, had, that, that doesn't know that you've ended things. Exactly. So there you are dealing with heartbreak. Yeah. Buying your asparagus, go Uluets, or go pick and pay. And then, tomorrow, and then, and then someone goes, hey, okay, mangma. Exactly. Then you, have, then you do that face. And you thought you were worried about your peace smelling of asparagus tomorrow. There's a problem now. <laughs> <laughs> no, so things, 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 things ended there and mm. I was very sad. But also when things ended there, I was going through the absolute most, mm. you know, mm. that's, that's when I was, I was literally when life had brought me to my knees. Sure. And yeah, things ended there. And I went, mm. after that, I went, I, I went on my recovery. Uh, a couple of months later, I checked myself into, into uh, a wellness clinic, sure. uh, a rehabilitation center. I was going to say, what is a wellness clinic? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fancy term for a rehabilitation center. So what were you rehabil being rehabilitated for? For everything. Drugs? 
for depression, alcohol. Mm. Um, and it's not that I was an alcoholic. I, but I, 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 yeah. I, I just, you know what type of person I am fresh? I get out war. You know, I, I, if I'm I, drinking, I'm drinking everything. Yes. Yeah. And we're, and we're, and we're going to do it all now. Sure. We're going to, so. So you went to Gumbi levels basically. Yes. yes. I was literally at Gumbi levels. Yeah. Um, and it was starting to affect me. And, and here's the thing. I always say to people, if you're going to drink, or if you're going to smoke weed, mm. do it when your mind is right. Mm. Because when you're doing it, when you're dealing with problems, you only prolong your pro- your problems. You sure. put yourself in an in a, in, in emotional debt mm, mm. and you're not dealing with the issue at hand. Mm. And a lot of us do that. When we're going through stuff, especially men, sure. when we're going through stuff, go, hey, it's one man cheater on me. You go, ah, Dwana, let's go drink. Sure. Let's go get more girls. Mm. It's like, no, that's not what I'm actually asking for. I'm, sure. I'm saying to you, I'm hurting. Sure. This is how I want to deal with mm. this thing, you know? But, but they are not dealing with it, but let's go drink yeah, now. Yeah, let's go drink yeah. now. Let's, yeah. Yeah, you know what? So we, we drink when we celebrate. We drink when we're down. So... At some point, I yeah, something had to give, and and I, I was very conscious that the life that I was living was not the life I wanted to live, mm-hmm. and I wanted to do something. So, that was my big drastic move, and ever since then, <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm great. I mean, I, I'm I, in I great was gonna shape. say, but life is looking good right now for you. It's so I mean, crazy. you're almost on every TV show it, or every <laughs> advert. <laughs> or let's go through the darkness of i don't think i'm coming from here to oh shit i'm out of this thing yeah man and i think that's that's why that 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 journey was so important is yeah. because i didn't see myself where i am today a year and four months ago mm. you know mm. life had brought me to my knees yeah i th- yeah i was literally on the brink of what do i do now so do so I- so you've been here before mm-hmm. where you've dealt with depression mm-hmm. but suicide is not an option it's your life option. brings you to your knees uh-huh. suicide is still not an option uh-huh. but you know you must get through this yes what's keeping you going from day to day and you you, you know you you bring that up as well i also realized that in my behavior yeah. yes i might have signed a uh, a, a contract with 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 myself and, yeah. and god and my ancestors mm-hmm. of course, this will never be an option sure but in my behavior, I am mirroring, uh, or I'm, I'm doing the things of someone who wants to check out. Sure. You know, I'm, I'm living recklessly. Yeah. I'm, I'm drinking. I'm doing all these things. I'm, mm. I'm putting my life, my reputation, my career, my family's uh, well-being on the line sure. because of the, mm. The, mm. the choices I'm making. Mm. So in a way, I might not be doing it the traditional way, but after a while, I started looking at it from, from, from an external point of view. I'm like... These things I'm doing, I'm actually self-sabotaging. Yes, yes, yes. And a lot of us do that when mm. we get to certain points in our lives and we start self-sabotaging mm. and we don't mm. understand why. Mm. And I knew I needed to change that and I did. And ever since I did that, I've, you know, for the past year and four months, mm. I have done the absolute best that I've ever done in my career. Sure. You know, and mm. I've, 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 that's why I'm able to do all these things mm. that you're mentioning. Mm. It's because I'm in... A good a, a state of mind sure you went so for a service i went for a proper service and what i want people to understand also about rehabilitation it's not about it's not a, a, a panel beating station yes you can't come in mm-hmm. you have to maintain sure afterwards but also you have to know that my car needs a service yes we mustn't tell you your car needs a service exactly you must know you i must, need a yes service. you must regularly service the vehicle that's yeah. what i'm able to do all these things if i was doing the things i was doing now two years ago i wouldn't have been able to cope yeah you know i'm able to cope and i'm flourishing man and i'm happy i'm in such i'm in such a peaceful place in my life Mm -hmm. and i'm so happy you know and i've got my family back god God was 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 able to to bless me. Liba mm. uh, were able to bless me. Yeah. So getting your family back means what exactly? It means finally, Mama says you can come home. Yes, because <laughs> <laughs> that's you know that's exactly what happened. So so when I when I went to rehab, yeah. I I decided to because I was like, okay, seeing as though I'm gonna be gone for like sure. a month, mm. um, let me let me fix my house. Yeah. Uh, and, and then I got my house uh, done mm. and I thought it would take about a month, yeah. but it didn't. It ended up taking like four or five. So in that time, I stayed so, with so my mom. So, so you believed the contractor when they said a month? <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's never a month. So then I went, I went to stay with my mom when I came yeah. back. Mm. So the kid who got kicked out at 18, 19, mm. finally at the age of 35, yeah. moved back in with his mom. 
and it was honestly the best. I, st- I think I stayed an extra month. So for six months, yeah, I I started my life again from scratch. What conversations were you having with mom in that period? Oh man, I was having the most deepest conversations. Mm. I, we had a conversation about, my mom opened up to me about things that we've never spoken about yes. in my entire life. Mm. We had a conversation about my dad. So you started a friendship we with start, your mother? We, we, my mom and I have always been extremely close, yeah. but we became even closer. Sure, sure. You know, we, mm. we, we started again, and that's where I felt like my life started again. So yeah, so th- it was that, and then, and then also, Umama Sekaya yes. <clears throat> said, all right, mm. you can come home. So yeah, I'm, uh, I am, uh, I'm married. Uh, huh? Yes. To whom? I'm happily married to Imani's mom. So I am back together with I- Imani as in uh, my daughter, m- as in uh, Olivia Chelet. Hey, then you can't Hey, let's talk about raising Imani. Oh man! How are you raising a money that she doesn't have to live what you lived? Um, you know what? Yeah. Uh, let me be very honest with raising Imani. So Imani, not Amani. Yeah, 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 Imani. Amani is what she will wear one day. Yes. Yeah. Imani, Imani is is a Swahili for faith. Yes, 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 yeah, yes. Yeah. So I won't lie. Initially, I feel like when you've lived a certain life, mm. you always want to make sure your kids have the better or the best, mm. and sometimes as parents what we don't realize is we overcompensate oh yes so my relationship with imani from day one till this day is amazing imani and i are best friends mm. you know we mm. we talk about everything mm. i how old is imani now she's she's turning 11 on yeah. the 23rd of july mm. Mm. so we we talk about everything we spend time together mm. we we go on daddy daughter dates where it's just the two of us we dress up and mm. we and we use it as our little bonding and catching sure. up time so I've always been intentional about that stuff. Uh, but there are things or areas where I've also realized that I'm, I'm overcompensating, mm. you know? Mm. And it's her that will bring me back, you sure. know? Because I, I come with this mentality of like, I can. And so all, let me do this for you. And, and she's like, no. All they want is time. That's it. That's, and, and, and I realized that myself, that I was breaking my back trying to give my kids everything my dad couldn't. But I was exactly. failing them at the one thing my dad failed me at, time. Time, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So... And I remember, like, it, it hit me the one time because I, you know, I, I, I took it to the toy shop when she was still much younger. And I was like, you can literally mm. grab anything you want, mm. like, mm. like whatever you want. Because comedy was comedy. Yeah, the time. comedy was comedy. So I'm just like, yeah. Because as a, as a parent who didn't have much growing up, you like, the day I can, I want to, I want that moment. They will know. And how do I share, but it's your moment. It's yeah. not hers. Yeah. Because at that It's moment, your flex. It's your flex. Yeah. She doesn't care. She's yeah. just like, because I remember she was like, she, she took a book and she mm. took like a, a makeup kit and yep. she was like, oh, I can do your makeup mm-hmm. and, you know, we can. And I realized that's all she wants to do. Sure. She was just like, mm. have us t- do an activity together rather than, because, you know, if it was us, we would have ran for those remote control jeeps. Or, and in a week it's broken. And, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, man, I think with with our relationship um mm. and like i wouldn't and that's you know that's the one thing imani what most people don't know imani is responsible for my success yes when i knew of her arrival mm. i had i have never worked as hard as i did i took my craft a little bit more seriously i i i took a chance to understand the comedy of business yeah. versus just the, the art mm. form of comedy mm. Mm. that's when i shifted to the business of comedy yes and Honestly speaking, between the time of me finding out about about Imani and her being born, I think that's that's when I made my first like big chunk of of, of cash. When my daughter turned twenty one at her birthday dinner, I remember thanking her that I moved to Joburg when you're not even a year old. But remembering that you need food, you need diapers, you yes. need this, I need to send you to a good school. It sends your hustle into... I was like, I cannot fail. Yes. I cannot fail. Yes. Because if I fail, I'm failing you. Yes. And I thanked her for that. Yes. That, yes, I was driven anyway. Mm-hmm. But now that there was a goal, look. I worked. My hustle went into hyperdrive. Yes. I literally... I. Li- well, you see what you said? Yeah. Those exact words. I'm, I'm going to do that on Imani's 21st birthday. Yes. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you're, that. You're, from, you're welcome. I'm going to I'm going to take that from Malume Fresh, and I'm going to I'm going to echo those words because I literally have to thank her. Mm. She is 
your wake up call. She she was my wake up call. Mm. She when I look at my success and where I am today, I go. If I go, wh- which moment did it all change for me? You know yeah. where they always ask you. So when did you? Where did it click? Where did it click? Yeah. It was when I knew. How rude. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's our moment. Ah <laughs> oh, man, and I'm and I'm, yeah, look, I'm I'm so grateful sure. for for what she did in my life, and I'm, I'm so grateful for for where we are. Love the second time around. How different is it? Oh, love second time around is the best thing ever. Because you you've know? grown up also. I've grown up also. Also, Latoya and I met each other when we were, I think she was, she was 18, I was 20. Jeez, you also did that. <laughs> no. She was out of school. She was out of school. I was, I was 20 years old. We met. Yo, at she was in matric. I just finished matric. Yo. Is it? Yeah, dude, it was the worst time of my life. Yeah. Because she's going to class and she's got morning sickness. I'm like, fuck, what have no. I done? <laughs> <laughs> so now na- na- Latoy, na- we, we basically raised each other, yeah. you know, and and we met, uh, I was, I think she was 18, turning 19, mm-hmm. and I was 20, 20, 21. Sure. We met at a friend's brand the 16th of June, mm-hmm. and I was dodgy that day. I had sure. bronchitis, I was... Yeah, I was just recovering from bronchitis. I was dodgy. I had no style. I had a beanie on. And because I had no pressure to to impress, mm. I was just myself. Sure. So and you met her at your lowest? I met her at my lowest. But still she saw the potential. She saw the potential and... But I can clean this one out. Can move your to a lot of that's the worst tasting cook. Ogar oily. But it works. But hey, but it works. Have you ever burped borsto? Have you met a guy you like with his good bronchitis? Borsto. After he burps, he's so Oh man. And you know, I shell at her for a year, Fresh. Yeah. I shell at her for a year. It was that cough because it is a fool. It is a fool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so after the TB so, healed. Yeah, so after the TB. <laughs> <laughs> We, we 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 had an amazing relationship and and we were young you know and i was beginning my career and all of this stuff and yeah. it w- it was good the first time around then i went through my things sure we had a we had a beautiful child together yeah. we bought our first place together things were mm. going really great and then i became such a destructive human being yeah and i didn't want her around me because mm. i could see the things i was doing oh, right? it, yeah, it, it wasn't fair to me it wasn't yeah. fair to her yeah it wasn't yeah. fair to our family and we split up and one thing i can be grateful for love second time around mm. is is it's not you know we think love is infatuation and love is not that fresh love is respect yes love is understanding each other mm. you know it's 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 a partnership love is a business true sure. that's what most people don't understand love is a business mm. Mm. we are two partners at any point, we can decide who's the CFO, who's the CEO, yeah. who's the MD, who's the what, what. And how do we make this thing work? You've got to schedule things in love. You've got to... So, second time around, I remember even... And, and, and it's weird you say that. We, our diaries are full of everything that matters to us, but none of it is our relationships. And that's what changed. Yeah. So, second time around now, I have my family in my diary. Yes. I have, I have daddy-daughter date. I have me and mommy time. I have... We've, we schedule... You must schedule everything. Been, dude, I've been preaching that. You, you must schedule. Dude, if you know that you're getting so busy that you can't even shag anymore, schedule a shag. And people think there's no love in that. Yes. So, so people think our relationship is boring now because we have to uh, schedule, schedule a shag. shag. Oh, it won't oh. happen. Schedule the shag. And then to make it exciting, always, you know, do a prelude to the shag. Because we're calling on 9 o'clock. Gone also or some who's chiefs today? <laughs> who's chiefs today? Who's Kaiser Chiefs today? Babe, please who's wear your today? Kaiser Chiefs t shirt later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so far, the yummy sundowns. 
<laughs> and I'm gonna have you go. <laughs> you schedule those <laughs> things, right? And, and you run your love like it's a business, and that's what that's what we've done now, yeah. and, and that's what I also because at at my lowest, Latoya was there for me. Yeah. Fresh. This woman has never actually left my life. Yeah. Because we had a even when we were not together. Sure. We were very intentional about how we continue raising mm-hmm. money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've always had a a, a good rapport. So, it's, so, good it's, so it would always be in an interest that you are thriving. Exactly. Because if you're not thriving, then Imani has a dad who's not thriving. Exactly. And so, and, and we need to think of co-parenting like that. Exactly. That it's not in your child's interest that he becomes a bum. No matter how much he hurt you, it's not in your child's interest that he becomes a bum. Exactly. You know, they're like that's why that's why that that thing that I don't know I don't, don't want to mention people's names, but yeah. The, the thing that happened to the famous presenter who's on his way back now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when when that lady exposed sure. him with yeah, the video, yeah. I was like, the kid, guys. Yeah, you're yeah. taking the kid out of private school. You're sure. taking food out of the kid's mouth because where now? Mm-hmm. What did he? Sure. This isolated event. What's that in happened. the best interest of the child? Exactly. And now, Always. if if you're gonna get in the way of me providing for my child, yeah. um, sure. That's that's the one thing I pride myself in mm-hmm. is being able to provide and pr- to protect my. Also, because you know you can provide. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so for for me, for me, fresh, honest, honestly speaking, honestly speaking, second time around, love. Yeah. Is so much better because even when I healed, and that's when that's when we we, we started reconnecting. We started, and I said to her, I was like, Yo, man, I'm I'm gonna get better, and when I do, I'm 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 gonna come for you. Sure. And she was like, hey, we were now. Nah, nah. yeah, you've been, the last time you came for me, we had a child. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're gone again. <laughs> and then, and then I, and then I came for her and sure. we, and we started, you know, and I think that part of starting it again, starting yeah. my life again, mm-hmm. starting mm-hmm. going home again, you know, a lot of people think it's a bad thing to go home. I didn't plan on going home again. Yeah. People think you failed when you go home. Me at the height of doing all these things, when I did the roast, I was yeah. living at my mother's house. Oh, so. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was back home. I started from scratch and that's what I was able to do with her. And it's been so amazing. And I was like, I, I've wasted so much time. Let me mm-hmm. let me do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we, we got married in, in the beginning of the year. And thanks for the invitation. <clears throat> no, so so here's here's how we did it. No, as well. it doesn't matter. Well. I'm still having the the big wedding. Okay. So we did a, a very small ceremony. We only had like 40 people there. And so it, what it, am I was that 41st on all this? <laughs> <laughs> so you know what we did? We we invited the guests and we said we're doing an engagement party. Okay. And when the guests arrived, there was a wedding. We're like surprise. <laughs> We decided, well, we're here. Yeah. Our spiritual uh, advisor and leader is here. Mm. We thought, heck, why not? Yeah. You guys are all here. Let's do the damn thing. And then, yeah, then we got married in front of all our friends and the close friends and family. And now, from life, like in the movies, we're going to go to the movies. The movie this week is Fast X, the new chapter of the Fast and the Furious saga. An advisory and to clarify for people like our Tosa, Shichonga, and other Khoisan viewers, it is pronounced Fast X, just for your information. Fast, Fast X. Fast. If you live your life a quarter mile at a time, I think robot lights should be labeled ready, set, go, then this is the movie for you. So following the heist in Rio in Fast Five, the son of the drug lord who was executed shows up to seek revenge, like an old Chinese movie, against Dom and the team. But this isn't just another movie about driving fast and dodging cops. There's also elements of tech involving artificial intelligence. So some of the Fast fans might be jazzed to hear the name God's Eye. And just when you think they're gone and they're done, just like nitrous, they give you a little bit more. So when the credits roll, don't leave. Could something happens right at the end. The only warning we give you about the movie is regarding Jason Momoa. Yes, he plays the bad guy, but in such a good, sexy way. Girl. To the heterosexual guys out there, watch yourselves as you watch him. Because even I'd admit he's looking. Yo, Momoa. Delicious. Hey, man. If you want to play the guy in the movie, you're like, 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 like Brad Pitt in Sparta. Was it Sparta? Was it? Troy. In Troy. Yeah. There's a part where Brad Pitt is taking the clothes off. And I'm sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, friend. My, my wife looks at me, she's like, Are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. Our rating is V3. 
out of X. Or in English, instead of Roman numerals, 8 out of 10. Why? Because with all the elements, action, characters, on missions, and with agendas, it's a ride. So, uh, yeah, here is the trailer. Oh, I missed your library, it's man. Let's work. <laughs> Dude, I just love high octane movies, like a lot of noise. I want to hear when there's an accident, I must feel like something dropped here. Yes. You know how someone is hit by a car, the left shoe falls off. <laughs> I want to hear like the shoe fell here. Or the sock comes out, oh, the but sock. the shoe is still on. Exactly. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. I, I love how consistent they've been with this with this franchise, man. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a dope franchise. And you know what I love? I love moments where you know it's unbelievable. But it happens anyway. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I love the fact that they've made Tyrese the guy who goes, Mark, guys, yeah. isn't it a little suspicious? <laughs> we survived every adventure. Dude, even Dom. I'm like, how many lives does Dom have? <laughs> like, Dom should be dead. On the last one, Dom hooked his car to a thing on the mountain. He yeah. flew off and came. I was like, ah, I, wow. I, laboratory Dom. <laughs> <laughs> But were they? Watchy. So check out at the bottom of, uh, in fact, in the comment section, uh, you should be able to book your tickets to go watch Fast X. It's incredible. You don't want to not watch it, especially on IMAX Nohal. Yeah. Enjoy the movie brought to you by Stir Kineko. Did you say you missed my live reads? Oh, man. Well, you know, what? while you were doing that live read, I was like, ah, there's, there's two elements about you, Fresh, right? Yeah. And, and this is what South Africa can attest to. Yeah. Your live reads. Because... A lot of people, when they do live reads, you can go, you hear, you go, I, mm. now we are telling you something. Yeah, yeah. The way you did that live read, yeah. I want to go watch the movie. For sure. You know what I mean? So no feeler. Nicky feeler. Busy bells. V3, or as you say, Roman numerals. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that flex. <laughs> a normal reader would have been, yeah, says Figgy Lego, Fast and Furious, V1111. <laughs> oh, sorry, I mean eight. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. No, but just, just like that, the way you finesse that yeah. and the laugh, my man, my man. Oh, man. My man, you got a ton of loves out of me. <laughs> In fact, you've got a ton of laughs out of me for the last easily 10 years solid, my dude. Like, you, you're, you're solid like that. You're consistent like that. Thank you. And, 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 and I think that's one thing. All the things that are happening in your life and around you right now are results of your consistency. I appreciate that. And, 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 and a lot of people don't realize that the minute you take your foot off the gas, uh -huh. and, and I'm little almost You see what I mean? The, the thread. Little <laughs> Just the minute you take your foot off the gas at the wrong point in your career, or in your drag race. <laughs> might be the difference between whether you're going to win the race or not, exactly. whether you're going to get the gig or not. Exactly. And a lot of us don't realize that. That Rari Lex Anyana, or the next gig, you don't give 100%. Exactly. Because you think, ah, oh, no, it's in the bag, it's a copyright they love. No. Or you, no. Or, or you base it on how you're feeling. You know, I, yes. I, I was having this conversation, with, so my wife is an interior designer, sure. and she's, she's working on a concept now, and she's like, I don't feel inspired. I mm. Don't. Mm. And I'm like, you, at the end of the day, you have to do the work. Yeah. There are times in our lives when we're not in the greatest sure. shape, we're not mm. meant, but you have to show up. Yeah. You have to do the gig. And that's where discipline comes in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I preach this all the time. The law of incremental gains is never wrong. I... If you do the same thing all the time, yes. every single day, something will happen. And you know what taught me that, funny enough, is yeah. Jim. Yeah. Then I understood why. Like, I wanna why you. Why all them gone? Then oh, all... <laughs> you know, when you're walking in there now, you're walking like, you know, your jeans are full of balls. <laughs> Because I, because the, the, the with Jim, right? It's like it doesn't doesn't matter how you're feeling. Yes, you sir. show up. Yes, you have good days. Sometimes you push beyond your strength. Other days you like, I know I can bench a hundred, yeah. but I'm struggling on sixty. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the point is, you show up and, and you, you do the sixty, and you, and you do the sixty. Absolutely. And over time, you realize, it doesn't matter what state of mind or shape or whatever I'm yeah. in, I need to do this. 
And over time, when I look back, I go, I might not be where I want to be, mm. but I'm so glad I'm not where I used to be. On my couch. <laughs> <laughs> My dude, your management are calling my management saying you're late for your next appointment. So we're going to need to let you go. Don't listen. Also, his name is Mpo. He's a vendor. Don't listen to Mpo. We are here. We are here. Also, it's not our fault because we, we, we're recording in Newtown. So halfway through our recording, the power went out. And then someone ran off with and, an amp. And then <laughs> someone stole a cable. <laughs> And the windows are open here. It's not cold, man. That man stole an extension cord. That's what he stole. So he's going to go melt it thinking it's cold, pack and <laughs> Couple people's cell phones are being snatched while we record. <laughs> My man, you laugh. Something happened like that the other day. They grabbed someone's <laughs> bag, which is said, Vima. No, no, no. hundred people. <laughs> and they came marching the guy back. They found him, I guess. They came marching him back. Uh, that's the worst. Like, Vimba is, uh, for people who don't know, Vimba means stop whatever you're doing. Yeah. Whoever's running, drip that person. Yeah. Take him down, and then we drop them. Yeah. And the, the problem with being Vimba is everyone gets a chance to beat you. Exactly. And now they're beating you for other issues they had. Yes. Now someone's beating you because, you know, Spitz keeps calling them. <laughs> Even grannies are coming out of me. Dude, the military, yeah, Vimba. Yeah. Guys going for a jog, they stop. They just stand Because if you're the guy running, you will be Vimba. <laughs> So if you, if, if, if you are a Caucasian and you hear the word Vimba, stop whatever you're doing. Yeah. Stop whatever you're doing and just look out for whoever's running. Whoever's running is the guilty part and they will be beaten by everybody. By the time you hand them back to the cops, they're like this. Yeah. Mob justice. <laughs> Someone got vimba here. Popcorn and cheese, quickly. Popcorn and cheese. It's, oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. Oh, you guys so are doing much. amazing work. You know, we, we decided we wanted to do a podcast that appeals to everyone. Yes. Uh, we wanted to take away from the, from the formal structure yes, of, yes. hey, who are you? Where did life begin? Sure. We, we wanted to create a space where we can have a funny conversation. Yeah, it's a chat. We're, we're, it's, we're, yeah. it's a funny chat. It's PG. Sure. So we, we, we don't swear. We don't talk about sex because we want, we want a podcast that you can watch sure. with family around. Mm -hmm. So you can put it on and your kids are in the back and you don't have to worry about it. Absolutely. They might hear, mm -hmm. hey, hey, you were scomoring to Emmanuel. Sure. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah man and mz and i or robot boy as he's affectionately known we're two boys from the south and we're like let's create a space where we can hang out with with people that aren't everyone is funny sure. not just comedians and 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 people mm. that are that are online uh, funny people but everyone you're funny mm. you know so when we have you on the show we know we're gonna mm. laugh sure. Do you sure. know what i mean so we want people to to see that side of all the people that they know that sure. we can sit, we can laugh. And the, the, the podcast has been doing well. Something I've delayed that I wanted to mm, do, I procrastinated mm, for mm. so long. I, p I bit the bullet. And yeah. when it started, there was all the negativity. Ah, this is what that is. And now people are loving it. And I'm mm. so glad I, I stuck it out. I stuck to it. And it's doing phenomenally well. Yeah, like you will learn well from Emmanuel. If you stick it out, man, <laughs> you'll be stitched. <laughs> if you stick it out, <laughs> you'll stick it out. Be ah, you'll get where you need to go. <laughs> Just stick it out. <laughs> so yeah, man, that's what, you know what my biggest achievements is honestly uh, for 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 the year going is uh, is, is is popcorn and cheese mm -hmm. and and it coming to life and us being able to do sketches and and all these things and play with it and then the mass singer south africa yes, you yes. know i i got announced as the host of the mass singer south africa and mm. i've never done anything i've done dope things in sure, my career sure. this is like a big like god is god is starting to show off god yo god is showing off my ancestors but you will never be busy my man i feel like when my <laughs> grand <laughs> i feel like when my grandmother got to heaven she was just like guys kupaling ping five minutes i yeah. just want to sort out my boy like hold my beer <laughs> <laughs> i want i want to sort out my son and yeah. yo man like god is showing off my ancestors are showing off yeah it's it's yeah i'm it's, i'm it's, honestly in the best place I've ever been in my career spiritually, mentally, mm. physically. Yeah, I'm June 10 is your birthday. June 10 is my birthday. I'll be turning 36 years old. Yeah. 
wishes for yourself for your birthday. Yes, uh, but but uh, you know, it, because I have so many friends yeah. and so many people who support me, sure. you know, I don't, I don't call people that support me fans. Mm. I don't have mm. fans because I, I speak to the people that support me. Exactly. You know? I, don't, yeah. I don't have both. <laughs> it's like... They're not throwing panties at you. So. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. The, the honor rock, yes. <laughs> <laughs> But but that you know like so I I started doing a birthday show around my yeah. birthday because it allows me to have my friends there my family there and the people that support me yeah. there. so and to make it back, a buck yeah and yeah. to you know make a buck you know cele celebrate being alive uh, so so you think June 10 is the next time we see you on stage June 10 will be the next time you see me on stage at um, Pop Pop's birthday comedy special okay. which will be at um, Empress Palace are you shooting it. I am, yes. So we'll be able to watch it and stream it after that? No. Or sell it in a DVD you, you, at the robot? You, you, How is it working? Your old age, fresh. Yeah? The DVD? Are they still? Uh, <laughs> even memory stick there. <laughs> pop up. <laughs> Yo. No, so I, I, I record it because I record everything. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a, that should be a lesson to everyone who does any show. Sure. Record everything that you do. Because you don't know what you can my strike a deal with later but deals aside my advice to black africans we don't document even just the basics of our lives enough Eggs exactly. document everything. everything i learned that from david gow document yeah. everything that you do that's why we're able to watch a, a, a thing about michael jordan yeah and you're like where did they get this footage exactly he's been documenting since he was 19 or 18 uh, absolutely or even younger don't just wait for until it's your birthday for them to take out the polaroid or king at the same time yeah and take one picture <laughs> and you think you've no document everything everything, guys. everything. that is your history that is yeah. your legacy so i do that i record all my shows and i and i and i have them on sure. trial yeah so we'll see you on the podcast otherwise we'll see you on uh, the mass singer otherwise we'll see you on june 10 at yeah. empress palace yes i will see you at yes. Empress Palace on the 10th and I will see you on Popcorn and Cheese when we host you. And when the wedding uh, bigger when, wedding when, yes. happens, uh, uh, number 41 so I'll make it into the room. Ah, <laughs> now you're not a guest or staff. What are you? Hey, man. Hey, moment, moment. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, always popping. Pop Pops is about to leave the building. What a week, what a wow, what a DJ Fresh what rocking wow, his shirt, your pillowcase, your Dali Tambo. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Yo, man, it's it's so good to be to be here again with in you. the same you know, space. I, I don't. It doesn't have to be radio or anything. Yeah, Just yeah. the fact that we can sit and your voice, man, and and how you do what you do, Fresh. You've inspired all of us. Sure. The fact that I'm doing what I what I'm doing yeah. is because it comes from you, and I wanna I wanna give you your flowers while you're still here. Thank you so much for for everything you've done for us, man. You're an absolute legend of a legend. Don't show us where your hairline used to be. No, this is my. I'm doing a um, a, a, a dali. Oh, the dali. Uh, <laughs> <name? laughs> that one braid. Eh? Um, and that's it for today. <laughs> We say goodbye to our poop call of the South and Pop Pops. Your cushion will be in the mail. <laughs> and I'm going to bring you, I'm going to bring you, hey, this melted 4x4 four four of yours first. What? Guys, and Pop Pops is leaving because oh, his management is shouting at my management. Oh, wow. Please get out, my dude. Oh, wow. And, and you can see in Limon New Town, someone broke the windscreen. I saw about the back love. The trailer, but trailer played. <laughs> Yo, man. I thank you, you so dude. much for having me. Love you long time, Malme Fresh. Away. What a week. What a wow. Le Chevrolet Leona, Le Nyora Latengi, Market DJ Fresh, aka Tato, aka the Big Dog, aka. My man. This is. Wow! What a week. Tick. This week at the movies, in a nation of many who've had to endure load shedding and that dreaded notice of low battery, comes a visionary. If you fear the appearance of one bar of battery life indicator, here's a man and company who battle to banish that fear. Please give a wild welcome to Keegan Pfeffer of Aduzi Power. Thanks for having me, Flesh. How's it, Keegan? Uh, all good. Uh, only those that deserve it get a movie intro, like you just got. Love the introductory. So you're welcome. Thanks. Keegan101, who are you, where are you from? 
Keegan 101, uh, from Durban originally. Okay. Windsor, uh, Treasure Beach. Grew up there. Okay, so colored guy. Colored guy, yeah. With an Indian name from Durban and a Jewish surname. I don't know about the Jewish surname. <laughs> that first sounds like a Jewish surname. Uh, I guess. Let's hope we can ride that Jewish. Yeah, so with an Indian name and a Jewish surname, you're going to make money, brother. Yeah, first name's actually Richard. Ah, Rich. So, yeah, Is some of my friends call me Richie. Ah, so you're ready to make money, brother. Yeah, let's hope so. Okay, so uh, born and raised Wentworth Durban. Yeah. And then how did you end up in the tech space? Um, straight out of school, did a BSc through UNISA. Okay. Worked simultaneously for like six years while yeah. getting this done. Uh, eventually graduated and then yeah, started working uh, in the tech space. So what were you doing in the tech space? Okay, I started working uh, at a small company called Microvision. Okay. Um, and then we did, we did biometric solutions and school solutions um, in, the Durban, in the Durban area. Sure. Yeah. Um, notably, the Island View storage uh, worked there for many years. Mm. And I think it became Bidvest Tank Terminals at some stage. Okay. And uh, yeah, learned a lot there and then said, ah, let's go for it. In fact, let's talk about why you're here. What on earth is a doozy? A doozy. A doozy is a power bank rental network. Okay. Okay. Slowly, power bank. Power bank. Rental. Rental. Network. Network. Okay. How does that work? Okay. Like 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 I say, you can rent a power bank right from a station. So we got these kiosks. Okay. We call, we call them power towers, right? Okay. Uh, these power towers they have many. Uh, um, power banks in them, right? And then we strategically situated them like throughout Johannesburg, for instance. So you could go to Rosebank, you could pick up a power bank, catch an Uber down to Sandton and drop one off. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, so it's like um, my battery is low, I need it. And now that battery is low, I do not need this anymore. So why should I carry it? So you return it. What said to you people need this service? I'm not going to say it's shady. No, because people are buying power banks. Why should I rent one? Why should you rent a power bank? Yes. Convenience. So here's the thing when you buy when you buy a power bank, all the maintenance is on you. Okay. So you own this thing, means you must take it home. It's your you baby. Must, it's your baby. You must feed it, wipe its poo. Yes, you must yes. charge it. When you go to an Aduzi power tower, you're picking up a full battery. No poo, no, no feeding. No poo. I'm done with it. I've used it. You put it back. We charge it for you. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, okay. So take us through step by step. How do I sign up for a doozy? And okay. then what I go to a black, okay, yeah, just talk us through. There's it. an app, okay. obviously. Okay. So you download an app and you register much like any other service. Okay. But we not like any other service. So you register, uh, you link your bank card to it, right? Okay. And we got some cool aspects on it. So for instance, we've got a biometric option on our tower. So you go through, you register your biometrics on the tower. Okay. When you go and you want to rent a power bank, you wave your palm, it picks up, that's fresh. Is that okay? And we know him, we trust him. We know him, we trust him, yeah. give him a power bank. You take the power bank, you go with it. And so let's say you pick it up at our tumble. Yeah. Because your battery's about to die. Uh, you left your cable at home because you were rushing this morning. Okay, so the power banks come with multiple cables. Power options. comes back with, with all the cables, so okay. you don't need a cable. Okay. Got the cables, you're on the plane, you land in Cape Town, you're done, you fully charge, you drop it off, you keep moving. Jeez, that yeah. is so dope. Yeah. So how do I know that my card details are safe? Um, so we use a third party, okay. which is PCI approved. So everything is, is, is locked down, trust me. Okay, so download the app. Yeah. Um, I do my biometrics on the app no, or so at the tower? At the tower. At okay. Once off, you just register your biometrics so that the next time you come, when your battery's dead, you wave. Because how do you scan a QR code when your phone is off? Sure. It's, so, yeah. The, so, how do you deal with the fact that some people are careless? I mean, it's not my power bank, so why should I look after it? You'd be surprised, eh? South Africans, actually, if you valued the service, yeah. you, 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 you'd stand correct. You understand. You understand. I'm rewind this video cassette <laughs> because I want to get a rewind one myself. 100%. So, you'll see a big consumer of our is um, the delivery guys, right? Yeah. If, you, if their battery is dead, they cannot work. Oh, right? yes. So... Instead of them ca carrying five power banks, which they need to charge all the time, yeah. they go, they pick one up, they use it. If you do not return it, you cannot get another one. Sure. So there's a need. So the moment there's a need, there's a responsibility that comes hand in hand with it. Mm. So you actually see 
the responsibility of South Africans picking up because they need the service. Sure. You will get one or two, obviously, yeah. but uh, we have measures in place to deal with that. So where are your power towers, if I want to be a part of a doozy? Where, where am I able to pick up a power bank? So what's great is you download the app, right? And in our app, we have a locate power bank uh, or power tower feature, right? Okay. You click on there and then you'll see these little... Uh, what do you call them? Locations that would pop up. Okay. Click on the location, it'll direct you to our power towers. So for instance, like I said, Sanson City, Rosebank, uh, Chameli is a popular one, Altabar. So for now, a lot of the, what we call hotspots yep. or, or areas in, in Johannesburg. And then how many cities are you in? Um, currently, we are currently in Gauteng, uh, looking to expand to Durban, Cape Town, actually national in the, in the next couple of months. Okay. Yeah. Challenges setting up something like this? Ah, plenty challenges. Yeah. Um, you would think, and I get this a lot, oh, load shedding must be just making this a breeze. Yeah. Actually not, eh? Sure. So, you, you, you can't uh, offer a service that helps load shedding, but your tower's down. So oh, for yes. instance- Yeah, your towers should have infinite power. <laughs> Inf infinite. <laughs> okay, so a number of challenges. Uh, we got to stay up when, when load shedding gets the whole country down, which okay. means we've got to implement processes keeping the towers up. So, so, what, do you, so do you have like backup batteries in the tower? Yeah. Okay. So we got UPSs that keep these, these towers up. Um, so now you got the power up 100%. Um, then you got challenges like um, these towers need to communicate. Yes. Because yeah, it all works on the internet. Um, but the tower that gives you the communication is down because of load shedding. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we, so those are the challenges that we got to think. So, we've got to get, we, we've put in place um, stuff that makes it wrong mm. to make sure that it picks up towers that are online in order for us to to be able to facilitate it. Because there's nothing worse than my battery's dead. I don't care about all these other things. I just need another battery. I need another battery. Yeah. How you get your connectivity, how you keep your Taiwan, that's a doozy. Don't make your problems. Don't mine. make your problem mine, especially if you're offering a service of this nature. I thought you'd say finance is one of your challenges. Yeah, finance is always one. Uh, uh -huh. It's always, a, 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 definitely, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> 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 I'm not sure what you want me to say. Uh, no, doesn't raising finance to you know for a startup like was it simple for you? No. Did you have savings? Did you go to grandma and say, "Grandma, we need to sell this kilt now"? Yeah. So uh, I think what's it? Is, uh, they, they always speak about the three Fs: what's it, friends, fools, and family. Yes. So you'd always start there when you uh, as a startup. Uh, oh, I thought you meant fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> I need money. Uh, <laughs> not that I found any fools. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, finance is always is always an issue as a startup. But there's there's many means and ways. That you that you get around that mm, mm. if you're persistent, sure, and, and and you know that this thing's gonna work, you'll get around it. It's a great concept. It's a great business. Yep. But is it your business or can I franchise? Um, we don't have a franchising option at this moment okay. in time. But what we do ha do have is a um, what do you call this? A partnership a partnership program. Okay. So for instance, we. If if you're an establishment and you put one of our towers there, we can we can do a model where depending on the rentals, we'd give you a percentage of the revenue. Uh, yeah. Okay, no, that's a dope idea. Yeah. And how's the reception been? I mean, are people signing up for Aduzi? Yeah, like I said, um, you'll see the delivery guys use it quite quite often. Yeah. Uh, and then general public, oh, okay, kind of getting onto it. So again, challenges. Um, education in South Africa. So mm. how do we educate people to understand that I can pick this thing up, go with it and bring it back? Um, I think in the, in, in the rental car rental industry, like, yeah. Um, uh, is there a penalty for a late return? Yes, there is. Okay. So we have, we have many packages. So it's at the discretion of the consumer of what they want to, what you want to do. So you can buy a package where we call it a quickly. Okay. means, uh, you pay 50 bucks and you can use a power bank for three hours. Right? Okay. Um, you can buy bigger packages where you get more what we call pops, which are rentals. So okay. you could do like 60 pops and you pay 200 bucks or something like that. But you, you're paying less for getting more kind of a thing because okay. you, you, you're all in now. So typically if I need it for 24 hours, how much am I paying? Um, if we do, it's, it's almost three rand. I think a rental, if you're paying 200 rand for that 60 pops. Uh, if you say 200 divided by 60, yes. you're paying nothing. You're paying nothing. You're paying nothing for convenience. But surely you, you have, I mean, your overheads must be incredible. Why is it cost that little? Because you're, you're paying for the power. Yeah. We got some smart guys uh, figuring out the maths. 
Aha. Yeah. Okay, so it makes business sense still. It has to make business sense or else what's the won't point? be alive. Yeah, what's exactly. the point? How do people get a hold of uh, Aduzi? Um, Instagram. Yeah. Um, our website. How do you spell Aduzi? Aduzi. A D O O Z Y. Okay. Yeah. Actually, go to our website www.aduzi.co.za. Mm. I think uh, our Instagram handle is Aduzi Lifestyle. Sure. Yeah, and uh, Twitter. Any word to youngsters trying to go off on their own like you've done? Yeah. What, what are some of your big learnings on, uh, on this journey? It's not going to be easy. Yeah. Uh, keep your head down. Yeah. Keep pushing. Um, be persistent. Sure. Don't give up. Mm. It's going to get really, really, really hard. Um, if you're not sleeping, you're on the right. You're on the right track. <laughs> but whatever you do, make sure your hair is nice. Um, uh, <laughs> thanks for the compliment. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Keegan, you're an inspiration, my dude. Yeah. Um, I there's nothing I love more than young people who realize that there's a solution needed here. Yeah. And those are the guys that actually make the most money. People who are willing to identify the gap yeah. and say, how can I service this gap? Yeah. And that's what we need, guys. We need solutions. Uh, we need African solutions for African problems. We need more of you guys out there saying, what is the problem here? And how can I provide a solution? That's how you make money. Ladies and gentlemen, Keegan from Aduzi. Thank you so much, Fresh. This is... Wow! What, what, what a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. You know, anyone who studied something like cinematography then decided, you know what, I think I want to sing. You don't? Well, we do. And that person is here with us right now. Please give a wow welcome to a singer who can also film herself skillfully. Malay <laughs> is in the building. <laughs> thank you. Tumela Malifo. Sure. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You know what's amazing <laughs> is I'm such a fan of your work, but when I come to meet you, because I'm ready to bow down to you, <laughs> you're excited about meeting me. I'm like, slow down. I'm the fan here. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think we've just been watching you your whole career coming I've been up. You. <laughs> I've been watching you since like the mid 2000s. This yes, it's, been, it's been that long. I actually journey. celebrate 20 years this year in the industry, so that's always um, exciting to mention. Yeah, you were singing with Kaya from about two, two, 2003? Sure. So I, I started in high school, and they were the first group that I was a part of back in the days of... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. so, so high school way. High school in Bloemfontein, St. Okay. Michael's. Okay, but Omosutu, what is it? So, Kishai, it's a Lesotho. Okay. And my, my mom has been working in the Free State, you know, my whole life. So yes, we yes, pretty yes, much yes. also uh, grew up in Lady Brand. Uh, ah, yeah. So, okay, so when you're now Lady Brand. Okay, you know, lady. <laughs> okay so take us <laughs> back to growing up in Lady Brand. Isn't uh, DJ Finzo from Lady Brand? It's Finzo from Lady Brand. Is he from Lady he, Brand or Makwat? It's oh, eh, hey, eh. And you I know. think Prince KB is also from F there Prince somewhere. Prince KB is from the Free State as well, yeah. No, no, but I'm, I'm thinking specifically Lady Brand. that area. I don't know them to be my neighbors in Lady Brand, though. There must be something in the water <laughs> that so much talent is coming from there. So, so take us back to yeah. your childhood. Um, so growing up uh, in Lady Brand, I think for me, I've always known that music is my first love. Yes, yes. Um, and it was always my mission to move to Bloemfontein, which is obviously the biggest city in the Free State. Hey, uh, hey. yeah. <laughs> so I nagged my parents and begged them until they they um, booked me in the uh, boarding school in St. Michael's. Okay. And that's really where my career started because mm. I um, got to meet some professionals in the industry. Sure. Um, did my first demo in, in Bluefontein and that's how I met Kaya. So, so, so before you are shipped off to boarding school, yeah. um, just a, a, a typical childhood of yours, what does that take us through that? Um, you know, one of the things that I think I've, I was just very grateful for growing mm. up in a place like um, Lady Brand Maseru as well, mm. um, is this just that sense of community, I yes. think. Um, you know, we would ride our bikes to school. It was mm. that safe. It was that easy mm. to do. And I think, um, you know, personally coming from the Christian home that I come from, I had a good life, I think. Mm. Um, we, we didn't have too much, but I feel like home... Um, 
has just uh, allowed me to be the person so, that I am today. Very humble kind of background, yeah. So meals that remind you of childhood, smells that remind you of childhood. <laughs> Tell us about You know, those. I still go home today and I insist my mom, I'm pele papa kamro, li means meat. That's, oh, wow. my, that's my meal. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, one of the nice things about growing up in a small town mm. um, is really just that... Uh, you know, ability to just, you know, be playful and, yes. and, you know, um, and it's fun, it's innocent. And it, it, it was fun and it was innocent, mm. you know, and I think um, I'm always grateful that that's the place that I, I come from. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so your grounding, your thankful comes from that yeah. humble, humble beginning, rural yes, beginning, as yes, it were. Yeah. And then you arrive in Bloom, uh, your high schooling, uh, your voice is getting out there, yeah. and then Kaya happened. Yeah, and you get you guys even when a person you come at the metros, I think. Yeah, two thousand five. Right. Um, no, don't tell me. I'll tell you about your career. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, how does Kaya happen? Um, I happened. Like I said, I was I was recording my my demo in a studio mm. um, owned by Bobby Johnson, who okay. also happened to be recording the group, and they were looking for a female vocalist, mm. and I just happened to be um, so blessed to meet them um, I, I always say they they really taught me everything that I feel like I know about a South African audience in mm. terms of um, you know songwriting engaging with an audience um, and also just my interest in different languages that's, sure. you know uh, just the neck in general writing and and expressing myself as best as I could at that time they were mm. the ones who taught me how to sing as Zulu and they would you know give me um, good tips on on how to really uh, be authentic mm. with 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 our different languages um does singing in Isizulu help you speak better in Isizulu or is it just once I'm done singing I'm done <laughs> no I've always <laughs> um you know I you know for instance in this my my recent album I've this is my first Suzul song that I've written, Ibiza yes. Sogalam. Okay. And I've always challenged myself to try and learn how to beyond really the singing. articulate. Yes. So beyond the singing, it's yeah. important to me that I I grow my knowledge. Mm. Uh, you know, um yeah, I sometimes in or you know, just get it wrong altogether. Sure. And I and I prefer that we learn mm. each other's languages and really Get to that and, place and not laugh appreciate. at each other right. when, when we break it. Yes, because it's in the breaking. I've, I've that broken I'm a couple of times, even in the songs. And that's know. okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yes, I think it's the effort and the thought behind caring enough. Because often our fear of learning other people's languages in is fearing being ridiculed. Right. When you are actually making your best effort. Yeah, yeah. You know, when white folk break isizulu, isizutu, it's one of But in a nice in way. In a nice way, right? But where, you know, when you break English, oh, it's <laughs> over. It's over. It's like you must retire. <laughs> I remember with um, Ozonga Linda. Yeah. You know, oh, with Cunis. Yeah, with Cunis. Oh, there's a place where we got it completely wrong. But I, I find that people have been very. For those that do, don't remember Ozonga Linda, please just give us a note in Yana. Ozonga Linda, Mangi Hamba, Al Soga, Soga Lami. And then I go, Sengi Kipesi. And I don't think that's right at all. <laughs> but people completely forgave me. Sengi Kipela is in Taba Angazi Uzobuya Nini. Yo. Yeah. Can you see the tears in my eyes? Yo, your voice though. Jeez. Yeah, so that was that was one of my first lessons on, on yeah. you can get it wrong, but you know, it's okay. We'll correct okay. you along the way. You're, yeah. you're, you're moving. Yeah. Okay, so Kaya happened. How old are you when Kaya happens? I was 18. I was in, mm. in matric, so I was the kid who was bunking school um, to go to gigs. Uh, my aunt was amazing. I love her so much. My mother would come through and sign me out and, and, uh, so, and give me excuses so about how familial family... familial support. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I think um, the school was also quite supportive. My principal knew mm. that I was part of this professional group and, you know, oh, wow. so it was great for me to have known from an early age that this is what I was going to be pursuing. Yes. Got me out, out of a lot of trouble. And the and the rents were supporting it from, from the get-go, right? They, they were. I think my dad, you know, my dad used to be a musician himself, uh -huh. played the guitar, yes. um, and at some point, you know... So it's in the blood. This it's thing. in the blood. He used to play Linda de Tabotsola the late. Oh, wow. Um, and so I think for him, he was a little bit more concerned for me, you know, your, your what safety, industry your well -being. is. My well-being, yes. just security in general. Sure, um, sure. 
but I think they've always they've always known that this is mm-hmm. what I was going to do, whether sure. whether they liked it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've just been behind me one hundred percent. So you guys go and win best newcomer at the metros in two thousand and five. Yeah. Does that make a difference in your life and your livelihood, or was it just another award? No, no. It was it was huge. Yeah. It was huge for the group. I even had to because I was in varsity at the time. Yeah. You went uh, after first year. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so my second year, I took off specifically to focus on Jeez. on promoting the album because yeah. gigs were coming in left right and center yeah um and i think we were really it was really um a moment of pride as well for people from the free state mm-hmm. that this is their group and we've just represented them so well so things changed drastically and mm. i think it was good to also be earning good money at a young age absolutely that was that was nice <laughs> first paycheck what did you buy or the first substantial Here's your portion. You know, with the first one, we say hi. Oh, yes. Eh, okay, so, so you're crowned like that. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I think it, I, it I was always. doing that. <laughs> you know, well, I remember my first paycheck at Y. I was like, oh, so I'm supposed to send this to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was such a, a sense of pride for me, you know, as yes. well, to be able to help my parents out every now and again. And there was a thanks need. for the support. Yes, you know, so, I, and then other, other than that, I guess my first, um, after that, would have just been like a proper shopping spree. Yes, yes, Like, yes, just yes. like all on me, you mm. know. Um, but I think I, I started having responsibilities, f- f- you know, quite young in my mm. adulthood. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I was always the responsible child. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Now, a lot of talented kids mm-hmm. will, for instance, think because I'm so talented, I'm set. Yeah. You still went to AFTA yeah. to put uh, paper behind the talent. Sure, sure. Why was it important for you to do that? So to be fair, I really didn't know what I wanted to study. That's the truth. Yeah. Um, but thinking about it, uh, the reasoning behind going to AFTA was to get a better sense of the music industry on the film side. I mean, just... Mm-hmm. My my thing was I was going to become a music video director, ah, perhaps, and, and yes. have another skill outside of the singing mm. um, that I could use uh, and would be an advantage to me as an artist sure. in the future. Mm. Um, and it was great. And it, mm. I think it's, it's just... It, went so well because I'm, I'm naturally a storyteller going into a film space um, and just having that opportunity to expand that knowledge mm. was great and I've been able to use it in the few music so you're videos qualified. that I have. <laughs> you're qualified as a cinematographer? As a cinematographer, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so degree in cinematography. So how tempting is it when you're shooting a video for you to say no? No, no, I'm no. I'm I'm director from the beginning. Oh, so you're there. You're there. This is my party. I can cry if I want to. <laughs> it's, it's been so um, empowering as well to know that... And to speak from a place of, I studied yes, this. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. and I think I also take my time even with, with music videos based on that because mm. you don't... I mean, the few I have, is it's been important to me that they're of good quality. Mm. Mm, so a Harsh lessons you learned from an early stage in your career? Um, it's, it's not been easy being a female in the industry because mm. of the, you know, typical stories you hear. Mm. So, uh, so how real are those? They're very real. That you've got um, to give it up if you want this. You've got to give it up if you want They're very that. real. I think... So without, how, how do you deal with that? Without um, asking anybody or, or giving up any want. names. No, you can if you want. <laughs> or just describe Some them. Some respectable people in the industry who, you know, being young, you approach with the thinking that um, they may have... Um, you know, the platform to give you opportunities oh, yes, yes. or to help you grow. Or a strategic or collaboration. You. Or a strategic yes, collaboration. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and then you have somebody, at, you know, you know, kind of make an advance that is not um, appropriate mm, mm-hmm. at all. And it can be very embarrassing and sure. you just don't know how to handle it. For me, I think, like I say, the upbringing is what allowed me to know that this is not the way that I would want to achieve mm. and succeed in the industry. I want to work for every single yeah. cent. Every single mm. thing that I've been able to achieve in this industry um, has been because of hard work. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it's been disappointing. I've had two, two instances where that happened to me. How did you deal with it at the time? Uh, and yeah. how did that affect moving on? No, no, no. I very humbly yeah. gently mm. thank you but no thank you mm. um thank you for the opportunity and your time but if this is the way you you want to work you intend for us to shame go shame on you shame and on you're probably you. watching this shame <laughs> on you 
<laughs> you must give it up if you. Gee. Yeah, it's very sad, and a lot of women still, you know, face that kind of um, situation. Mm. But mm. I think um, th that, f for me, has been one of the difficult challenges. I think, mm. just in mm. general. Now you're in an industry where you're having to deal with that, mm. or you're having to wonder, can I trust this person I'm yeah. working with? Yeah. But you're also a human being with needs. How do you choose? who to relationship with and when to relationship. Because I'm seeing a nice uh, rock on your hand. <laughs> Fortunately, this rock has nothing to do with this industry, okay, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, okay, but the rock is legit though. Yes, it's legit. Okay, I said stop non Because ah, okay, some of you guys can stop non -sons. so just so people leave you alone. <laughs> um, I've, I've been really blessed generally yeah. to have been able to meet up with decent people mm. um, for instance Cunis was one of the first guys that I met who really put me on in terms of um, just that kind of platform that would allow people mm. to recognize Manishoka as sure. a vocalist um, and he was a, a very high Cunis whatever he's, he's, he's a dude <laughs> he's a, like, he's a like decent Cunis. good yeah. guy yeah. you know um, and I think that just subsequently we you know I was blessed enough to meet Kent, Kent was a a, a decent guy. Hey, wait, nah. <laughs> but also, but but then again, though, you know, very Kent, talented. K Kent being uh, the very uh, soft-spoken, quiet guy. Even if Kent liked you, he'd never tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness, I never went there at all. Um, yeah, no, and his um, his influence as as a DJ and mm -hmm. and then having me on falling. But surely falling changed something. It, in you know, career. for sure, it was. It's the and biggest black coffee jumping. To falling, right? Just took it to another. <laughs> like. Can I tell you, I was in London last year for a mini tour in June, yes. and I cannot perform anything um, or anywhere without making sure that that's part of the set list today, yeah. till till this day. And it's it's really beautiful to have. Uh, you know, a couple of tracks that are classics yes. um, under my repertoire and, and Falling is certainly one of them. And you haven't really arrived as an artist until you have that one song, you yeah. know, if I don't perform this, there'll be a yes. riot. <laughs> until you have that song in your repertoire. No, and you have to do it. You what take a boss at it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You're Falling, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to this day, you play Falling, every woman in the room, top right. of their voice. Yeah. And I'm like, what has she done? <laughs> When did you realize that falling has become the anthem that it did become at the at the time? I was in a taxi yeah. one day, yeah. making my way home. Yes, and you know, there the song is blasting. Yeah, um, in some in some guy's car, and a couple of times in that season, mm. you know, just like a few days apart, it was like falling, falling, everywhere, you know. Yeah. And then I knew that oh wow, something is happening. Something has happened, and um, yeah, I just I don't know. I think. It, it was all really surreal and I was still very young mm. and I had just left the group Kaya so True. just hadn't even started my solo career at all mm -hmm. um, and then the pressure that I felt after that particular song when I was now working on my album yes, yes. And, and people's expectations that I would go into house music mm -hmm. um, so following up a song like that yeah was was, was something of a challenge yeah, um, it's, but a, it's a blessing and a curse of sorts at the same time <laughs> <laughs> so I, I never thought I'd, I'd survive it sure. as, mm. you know, just the, mm. the force that it was. But, you know, yeah. It's Leaving good. Kaya. Yeah. Why? I, so I had, to get, I had to get back to school. Mm. I had to complete oh, my took degree. A year off. I took a year off. But you went back. Yeah, I took Many a, of us <laughs> never go back. We never go back. I took a year off and I, I, I owed it to my parents to complete the degree. Yes. And it was just not possible to do both sure. anymore mm. um, and so they they really also needed to continue and couldn't it was just juggling the two was mm. not working out for mm. either one of us one of the hardest decisions of my life you. but it was how did, just the, a part how, how did the conversation go how do you dump a group because they're going oh, back to school guys <laughs> <laughs> the group meeting the tears the questions that came what, you know what, what, what were some of the questions you know I mean you know why would you do this at this point and I think that was uh, uh, particularly from fans and people who'd been yes, supportive yes. We've and, come and who'd far. seen how far we'd come mm. and it was not the ideal time to, mm. to quit so mm. um, yeah it was, it was heart wrenching I don't want to lie but you've been earning money since you were what 17, 18? I, I've been on earning money since yeah, like yeah, 17, yeah, 18 yeah. what's your relationship with money? do you have a love-hate relationship? <laughs> do you have a good relationship with money? you know in the industry that we're in fresh it's up and down hey? yes to be fair and honest, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, when you're gigging, it's, it's seasonal, yes. eh, you know, so... But do you save when you're gigging? Yes. Or do you spend because it's here? And no, 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 no. I think I've... Because it's been 20 years, I, I now understand that there are seasons in the air when, mm. you know, it's back-to-back -back kind of working. And then that seasons that it's very quiet and it's very dry. Mm. So I've, I've really been um, conscious of making responsible decisions. Sure. I have children now. I'm a I'm a family woman now. So in fact, that was yeah. my next question. Yeah. How does getting married or getting into a committed relationship and having kids? How does it change how you relate to your own money mm -hmm. and money from the collective? And then <laughs> um, I definitely don't put myself first at yeah. all yeah. in terms of. I mean, I guess some of the first investments will be Malay, the artist, sure. because that's where, you know, I, I make my money from. Mm. Um, but everything else, it's the kids first. When winter hits, mm -hmm. you think of the children first, you think of the household first, mm -hmm. and managing that is, is important. Habi is, is great because then I think he allows me to make a lot of my own decisions financially, which is mm -hmm. great, and he's doing his own thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it, it does change a lot, um, having a family, even just how I... Even just my career and the choices sure. that I'm mm -hmm. making, and it was hard. For instance, being away for a month from my kids, mm -hmm. traveling abroad, mm -hmm. I would have rather had a lot more traveling happen at a later stage, absolutely, or at an earlier stage rather. Yeah. Any guilty pleasures though, like maybe things you buy and eat before you get home, <laughs> or things you buy and hide in the back of the wardrobe. <laughs> I love, I love shoes. Yeah. I love shoes, and and shoes are expensive. Have you ever bought shoes but you never declared them? No, I don't declare. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't even declare that I'm going to. It's like, hey, listen, I've got to run a quick errand. I'll be right back. And then people discover shoes weeks after. Like, what a hey, but when did you get they, these? They nice. When did you get these? It's like these old shoes. Can you feel like a Hey, well, one yeah. So I love, I love um, collecting shoes. Yeah. That's that's for me my guilty pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to play a little game. It's called Malay the Musical. Mm -hmm. So these are songs that if Malay was a musical, uh -huh. the steering, which we assume you'd play yourself in the musical, uh -huh. would be singing these songs. Okay. Uh, for example, um, Malay the Musical, Your Childhood. Yes. Which song takes you back to your childhood? Um, and yes, we expect you to sing it for so us. <laughs> um, my dad was a huge fan of Sangomot, and that's yes. really what played in the house a lot. Mm -hmm. And specifically, Hey, when Africa, Hale Ududse, Haye, Samaya Loi, Bachela, Sabu, Pillow, Zoha, Hui, Kate. See. <laughs> and that's and that's a cover that I that I do all the time just because yeah. it means so much to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, your papa's relationship Le Buntate Sepotsola yeah. and the entire ilk. Yeah. Did you understand at the time? No. That this is the caliber this is of how great this is the caliber of no. <laughs> Not at all. I think but Sanko Mata just represented by Soto internationally yes, and yes. I think just from a young age there was a, a knowing inside of me that this was great. Like yeah. the music um, showed me just how beautiful our language is, first mm -hmm. of all. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, Sesotho sounds like this. Yes. Um, that's what, you know, this is I nice remember Sesotho. being yes. a thought in my mm -hmm. head mm -hmm. as, a, as a very young kid. So I just definitely had yeah. no idea how huge, yeah. Malay the musical, you're in high school, you think you're in love. What song was that? Um, I loved Amel LaRue. Uh -huh. I think I, I called a boy once to sing him Amel LaRue. You're like. <laughs> Can we a voice? What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't. I'm okay. actually going for my 20 year reunion at school, so I, I shall not so what song divulge. Did, well, so which Amel LaRue did you sing to um, this boy? Baby, I want you to listen. I stayed up all night. So I could get this thing right And I don't think there's anything missing yep. <laughs> Why are you calling deep as yep. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why I will not and, mention and, the boy's and, name and, and that's not the guy you married <laughs> I know, I know, sorry babe, my bad, my bad yeah. <laughs> Malay the musical, mm -hmm. now you know you're in love Maybe it's the song that uh, reminds you of Hubby even What's that song? Um, 
I'd like to sing one of mine because it is for hubby and okay. I did write it for him. Okay. And I might as well just on this Might platform. as well. <laughs> just do it, girl. Only pets I got Sugala usugulo kukala Ses kuli lingane Ay wangi pata gache Gisho ukala no gungi bona Tuluma mele We so ganam, so ganam, so ganam, so ganam, so ganam Oh, you want to so ganam? We're meaning in parallel in Goma Guys, if she doesn't sing to you like that <laughs> you are not the one you're not the one <laughs> malay the musical the mm-hmm. song from your repertoire that you feel changed the rest of your life um i'm gonna sing the one from my recent album okay because it's about to change the rest of my life ah. and, I, and i feel it okay um is this the brand new single yes okay it's it's a single from it's a, it's the main single that's been received highly yes, 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 from yes. the recent album that I like. Okay. Um I'm power high moy oh hanalena I'm to my fat sing lena come on <laughs> Guys, Malay is in the building. I, I, I don't want her to leave. Malay the musical. Yeah. The song that took you through a period of loss or heartache. Yeah. What was that song? So we're, we're near the end of the musical now. Yeah. Where we think our staring is like it's over. Yeah. What was that song at that moment? Um, I absolutely love, and it always and, and it still does mm. carry me through. Mm-hmm. India Ari. I think it's titled Beautiful. Okay. And it says, "The time is now." I'm going to pack my bags and take that journey down the road. Because over the mountains, I see the bright sun shining. And I want to live inside the glow. I want to go to a place where... I am nothing and everything, I think, <laughs> before I ruin the lyrics, yeah, but that for me is one of those that, yeah, that, that picks me up when I'm feeling down. Does music become your go-to place when you are feeling, I don't know, not centered? And is it listening to music or singing music that it's, does that I for think you? it's it's, I always run to my pen and paper, it's, yeah. it's the writing okay, so it's, for me, and so anytime... I'm going through anything, mm. good or bad. Sure. That's that's where I go to. Mm. And it's, you know, it's, it's interesting now doing motherhood at the same time. I have moments where mostly my, a lot of my creativity comes when I'm washing dishes, as mundane as that is. Um, but that's when I'm able to really kind of... <laughs> Isn't it dish channel these washing songs. just the best therapy, though? <laughs> it is. This is for me where, you know, I do a lot of writing. And then I have a two-year-old son who goes, Mommy, Mommy, shh, shh, shh. And I think, boy, mm. do you understand yes. who your mommy is? She <laughs> thinks for a living. Don't tell me to shh. <laughs> and you're getting it for free. <laughs> and that, you know what you're I mean? You're <laughs> little thing. You know, yeah. you know, we've had a dishwasher for the last 14 years. Okay. We've never once used it. I'm, I'm telling Not you, once. right? Yeah. Not once. <laughs> I know a lot of people who do and uh, and and seldom use. I will say to my that. daughter, "Don't worry, I will do the dishes for you." <laughs> and I'll stand there and do the dishes. Yeah. And when you're done, you're like, "That just feels <laughs> that was, so good." Yeah. yeah. Finally, it's mm-hmm. like the rolling we're rolling credits at the end of Malay the musical. Okay. And it's you're the staring, yeah. and things have turned out well. Okay. Like, this is your victory song. You're like Rocky Balboa running up those stairs there in Chicago. <laughs> what is that song? Um, oh, 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 
Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. <laughs> Why don't you go into gospel? <laughs> this is where we're heading. This is where we're heading. And I You're think, lying. <laughs> I'm, I'm so serious. And um, I, this is just where I'm spiritually right now in my life. I've done a lot so of you're going, So you're leaving us? Bye-bye. <laughs> this was literally me celebrating 20 years in the industry this year. Um, some highlights have, you know, for the year have been yes. performing at the Bush Fire Festival, which I'm going to uh, very soon. Yes. Um, and just, I'm at a place in my life where I just want to thank God for the grace to have mm. been able to travel mm. this for, for this long. So as you leave uh, as secular people, yes. um, may I do a gospel track with you? It's, so that we ease Can it be fully noted? Cameras, can we just zoom in on that? Gospel collaboration, <laughs> DJ Fresh and Malay. Malay. Oh, I love it. Oh, it sounds so good. May I send you the beat this week or next week? No, it's done. Before the end of this month. Okay. Uh, we're going to release it in exactly four weeks. <laughs> in exactly four weeks from this Friday, Let it be noted. our song is it's dropping. Coming out. So I love please it. be on the lookout for that. You're going to bushfire in Swaziland. <laughs> yes. What do festivals like that mean for, uh, to you and your career? You know... Like I say, 20 years, I've always wanted to perform at Push 5 yes. because it is just one of those multicultural and just, you know, like a melting pot um, mm. and everything and everyone that is that is relevant and, and beautiful mm. um, musically and, and artistically. It, and, and it brings Southern Africa together. It brings, it brings Southern Africa together. And I think... Um, for me this year, uh, it's just one of the, the highlights for me this year. Mm. Um, I'm going to be performing songs from the Kitlo Fisha album. Got a Kitlo Fisha album, Lagata Laka album. And yeah, I think it's just going to be so much fun. Mm. I don't know, which is just like that festival that everybody Absolutely. wants to attend. Absolutely. A beautiful lineup. They've got the best of the best. Mm. Shoma Josie, I know, is on this year as well. Um, uh, right down to Jack Parrow. So mm. just in terms of like diversity, mm. it's just so much fun. Yeah. Malay, you are so much fun. Thank you. Uh, you've had an incredible career. Yeah. Um, I think you've taken a lot of people through different milestones in their lives with all of your releases. Right. Yeah. You know, from Zogulinda to your brand new album, sure. to the gospel song me and you are going to do. That's also going to change people's lives. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just want to remind you that please continue being the person that you think you are. Mm -hmm and that you've walked like you are. Thank you. Because you are the person who you think you are. Thank you so much. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> it sounds, sounds so deep. good. It sounds very deep. <laughs> and she agrees. I agree. <laughs> I'm going to be the best version of me. You know, and I, I, I thank God for the grace. And thank you so much for having me on your platform. We're going to have you back. Yes. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Malay is about to leave the building. And please remember, singing in your own language is the most beautiful thing and most incredible honor that you could bestow upon yourself. So to say, Monat, eh, kiss a china, we know. So how chow chat? This is. Wow! What, what a week. What a week. Shout out once again and as always to AM Studios for housing us. Africa Podcast Network, shout out to you guys. Pezula Works, loving your cinematography and our audio engineer, special effects guy, Otis the Floor Fraser. To our guest, Malay. Pop Ops and Tech Keegan Pfeffer, CEO of Aduzi, and uh, also our creative director, Kuvesh Mohan, and our show producer, Kele Zomodisa Gang. Email waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Have a great and a wow week in spite of yourselves. See you next week. Mm -hmm.